I think that uh, I was fascinated by American history. And when, when this event took place about the weather underground going to violence, um, I felt to make a film about that, it was too close to the violence. It was too close to that time. Now, um, 30 years later, it seemed um, that you could now tell this story because it was now a piece of American history. When it, when it first happened, it wasn't history yet. It was a live event that was still reverberating through the, the culture. Now, you could look back on it as you could the time of McCarthy, the time of Watergate, the time of the Second World War. You could look back on these moments and say, oh, that's now a piece of American history. So I think that was the, the basic reason. And on a, on a more personal, humane level, I think I was taken with the idea that this could bear similarities to a very famous classic, Les Miserables, about a person who uh, is a fugitive without his true name, and he is pursued by an inspector who is dogged and will not give up. I think those are the two things that drew me to the project. It wasn't a question of age as much as the quality and, um, and the, the feeling of them as, as people as well as actors. They were all good actors. Uh, being an actor, I'm very sensitive to working with other actors who are good actors. Um, and so therefore, the film was cast with people that I thought were good actors, as obviously with Shia LaBeouf. Um, so that was the reason, and, and Julie Christie and I were, we came into cinema around the same time at the same age. And so I felt that was a nice connection that she and I could have. Um, we don't have the same at stake, I think. Uh, you know, Bob's generation, they put a gun in your hand and told you to go run through the jungle and shoot people you didn't really have a choice. My generation is very different. Uh, we're not being asked of the same things. We're just broke. Uh, so I think um, it's easier to deal with being broke than being asked to kill. I think every generation has its moment. Every generation has its moment. Every generation has its moment of rebellion, its moment of discontent, and its chance to do something about it. The conditions might be different, the times might be different, but it always comes, and it always will. Well, I, I think I'm the only one that can answer that because he wasn't even born yet. So uh, I, I hate to take that question out of his hands. <laughs> um, what did I think at the time? I was sympathetic to the cause. I, I believe they had a good reason to rebel. I think they had a good reason uh, at the same time, I felt that you could see the handwriting on the wall that it was going to self-destruct, that the cause would eat itself because of ego and because of the fact that everybody in the cause began to get so pleased with themselves that it was only a question of time before they would turn, against, they, they would turn in on themselves. And that made me sad because I thought the cause was a just one. I thought the war was wrong. I thought they had every right to refuse to go to that war because it was wrong. It was an unjust war. Um, but that was just my opinion as a slightly outside person because I was starting a career and raising a family at that time. I, I was not politically involved. Where? Oh, there. <laughs> For me, it was never a, a generational thing. Um, I, I was playing a hunter. I mean, I, I obviously couldn't go back and study, uh, you know, journalists from the past. The guys that I did study were hunters, uh, far more aggressive than uh, journalists that I've met in, in my life, because they're crime journalists. So they're, you know, the goal is to get there before the cops. It's an aggressive job. They're hunters on a safari. It's very different. Uh, generationally, I, I mean, I, I can only speak for my generation. It's the only one I studied. I think the generations were, you know, <clears throat> obviously. Thank. I think uh, generations are subject to the times they're they're in, and I think times were different in in my generation because I was of that generation. 
Um, in terms of journalism, I think journalism was slightly different then. Uh, when we made the film All the President's Men, that was 1974, 75. Journalism was in a different place then because the conditions were different. Uh, there was no internet, there were no computers. There was none of the new technology that has increased the flow of information and also make things more complicated. I think it's harder to find the truth when there's so many channels coming at you trying to tell you what the truth is. So that didn't exist then. So the conditions were, were different. Uh, but, the, but the fundamental part remains the same. And that is there will always be the need for some sort of uh, reform. When the people that make up the body of the public, like in America, uh, are suddenly deprived of opportunities they see special people getting, or their freedoms are being taken away, or they're forced to go into a war they think is wrong, they're going to speak out. And I think that condition will always exist. Or that, that, that will always happen. Uh, and I think it's a healthy thing, because that, that has to do with change. I mean, change is inevitable. It's going to happen, whether we like it or not. I think one of the things we see in the current political situation in America is you see a contest between two sides of a, of a situation. One side believes that change is inevitable. I'm talking about Obama. The change, since it's an inevitable, then you try to make it positive. You, you try to take it into a positive direction. The other side is afraid of change, and they'll do anything to prevent it because they're afraid change will leave them behind. And that's created a very difficult situation in American politics today. It's very sad. I, of course, studied Bob in that movie uh, thoroughly because that's a, you have two characters there. You have Bob playing more of an idealist, um, and, and you have uh, Hoffman playing more of a, you know, cut any throats, nobody gets in my way, you know, nothing's in front of the story kind of guy. And my character's juggling both. Um, I think in general, what I experienced uh, in taking the script that I was given and putting it on the floor, meaning going and, you know, being with reporters at the LA Times for a while, there's far less idealism in reporting. There's far less idealism in journalism. Journalism is, is glory-based. It's whoever gets the story first. That's more important than the story most of the time, at least in my generation of journalists. And there's a great book that Bill gave me early on called The Journalist, uh, Journalist and the Murderer, which explores no. the whole idea of, you know, where do, where do ethics come into play? When is it not about the story? When do you put the, the pad and the pen down to help the woman getting raped? You know, uh, and I think that this script explores a lot of that. I mean, that's what I'm juggling throughout most of this movie. When does the reporting stop? When does my humanity kick in? Similarity. Um, having, having lived in that time and now, um, the chance to, create, to, to put on screen a character that Shia, Shia LaBeouf embodies was very exciting to me because you could show the difference between journalism of today. I'm talking about my country. I cannot speak for Europe. Journalism today and journalism then. Are there any similarities? Because you can certainly say, well, there's different, you know, uh, all the president's men, you know, uh, the, the conditions around it were different. Um, you didn't have such bipartisan uh, anger between the parties and so forth. But if you look carefully, you'll see that there is a slight similarity in, in one I wanted this film to show, which is that underneath the goodwill to seek the truth, underneath the effort to dig beneath uh, a lie to get to the truth, usually you will find ego. And in all the president's men, these two guys were constantly saying, we're going to get the truth. Ben Bradley, the editor, was saying, where's the truth? Where's the truth? And they were going after the truth. But some part of them knew that in getting to the truth, there was going to be glory. And the glory would reflect on them personally. And that's where the ego comes in. And it was a very subtle thing, but I wanted to show it in that film. In this film, what um, the character of Ben, the child plays, child plays, is searching for the truth so ferociously, you admire it. You say, this guy is going to get to the bottom of this. 
But there's also, if he does get to the bottom of it, if he does get ahead of the FBI, there'll be some glory for him. So there's a very subtle th str uh, thread that connects the two, and it's got to do with ego. You're talking about, you're talking about the difference in, in my country and your country, and you're also talking about young people versus older people. Uh, yes, I am very, very envious of Europe because of its antiquity, because of its age, because it's been here so much longer than we have. We're such a young country, and you can really feel it. D despite all the glory and all the, the power of our country, which I think is mostly in the environment, I think our physical, the physical part of America is incredible, and I'm very happy to be a part of it. But in terms of cities and cultures, we're only 200 years old. We're thousands and thousands of years old, and I feel that when I come here, and I love it. I, I really love it, and that's why I like coming here. And you're not going to feel it any more than in Italy, and particularly here in Venice. Just the fact that it's here is like some kind of miracle, you know. So yeah, I feel it, and I and I miss that in my country. In terms of young people. Um, I think that each generation has the chance to lead uh, in its time. And it would make me very sad to think that my generation had so corrupted that ability that there's nothing for them to be able to do. So I believe we now want to hand the reins to the new generation coming in, who I think is a terrific generation. But we have to be able to give them something to lead with rather than given them something that's rotting. So I hope for the best. I did not talk to Bernadine Dorn. We did not talk to Bernadine Dorn um, or Bill Ayers. <clears throat> what we did do was interview their son, who was raised um, as a fugitive uh, for five years. So he was five years old when they finally came up and, and uh, came clear. Um, for my character in the film, despite all the political uh, references and despite all the pain of what people went through, fundamentally, the film is pretty much about what a man will do for a child. What a man will do to have the love of his daughter preserved. What he will go through. In that sense, I felt there were similarities to Les Miserables. So my character is primarily doing what he's doing, which seems impossible, an impossible task, um, because of a love of his daughter. The rest of it is what sits above that. I didn't answer that first, it was easy. I, I thought he, he was a really wonderful actor, and I liked the work I'd seen him do, and I, I thought he had the right intellect and the right energy and the right skill, and I hoped that he would do it. It's uh, wild for me to hear it now, just like it was wild for me to hear it when he gave me the job. And it's wild every time I get a job. And it's, for me, I go to set it's the first and last time every time. And, and it, nothing changes. I'm blessed. Well, I don't think we're useless, otherwise I wouldn't be here. <laughs> um, I think there will always be a reason. I think there will always be that same condition. I, I just. If I look back on the history in my country, and I look back all the way to the 20s, the 30s, the 40s, the 50s, I see the same conditions repeating themselves and including the same mistakes repeating themselves. So my guess is that no matter how things change, certain things will always be remain the same. There will always be a need to try to right a difference that occurs. And that might be a different uh, cause, at different times. It'll always be there. I think it's inevitable. Um, so I think that some people may feel, oh, what was the point? I lost so much of my life. I lost my identity. And others will feel, I don't care what time we're living in. It was right to do it. I think that condition will always exist. I don't think it'll ever be just black or white. There will always be that gray area 